What's going on, summoners, and welcome to another episode of Pro Guides' Best Champions to Main, now in patch 1219. The champions we pick for this series are strong picks with high performance but have low, low ban rates and are unlikely to be nerfed anytime soon. They are reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We also have a series that covers the most broken contested picks in each role, so be sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss out when we post those as well. We'll start things out in the top lane with Quinn. Despite performing so well that we recently moved her up to the OP tier, Quinn remains a pretty underplayed champion, but that just makes her an ideal champ to pick up. Like any other ranged top laner, Quinn is a pretty obnoxious bully right off the bat, with the constant poke from her auto attacks making it punishing for your opponent to even move up to CS. So what sets her apart from those other picks? The biggest thing is that she can push her lead across the rest of the map thanks to her ult. Since it allows you to zip around, you can easily go help your jungler or look to gank other lanes and make it back to top without missing out on too much XP. Alright, alright, before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players, and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over to ProGuides.com for some professional help now. The second top laner we have is Sejuani. Once upon a time, Sejuani top was a pretty rare sight to see. But now, I think we've just accepted that it's the role she should always be played in. She does a lot better here than as a jungler. The build we have makes her a brick wall of a tank, but if you feel like you want a bit more damage, pick up Demonic Embrace as your second item. It's particularly good when you're dealing with other tanks and juggernauts in your lane. Our last top laner for today is Tom Kench. He's one of those picks that seems to always be up and down the performance charts and right now, he's sort of on the upswing. He isn't ridiculously OP since he generally does his best when bruisers are meta since he counters them super hard. But still, he's doing plenty well enough that he's worth picking up as a main. Usually, tanks want to frontline in teamfights, but that's Tam Kench's weakest point. Most of the time, you want to be playing to split push, but when it is time to teamfight, you'll be using him to dive the enemy backline. So be sure to run Ghost for the extra sticking power. Taking a look now at the jungle, our first champion is Nocturne. He's been really popping off ever since his 1216 buffs. Riot did give him a follow-up nerf the very next patch, but it barely made a dent in how consistent of a champion he is. He's thought of as a more uh, scaling-oriented pick since you generally need his ultimate to successfully gank lanes, but that doesn't mean he's weak early on. In fact, Nocturne is easily one of the stronger early game duelists out of the champions in the jungle pool. Next up, we've got Skarner. You know how sometimes you're winning a game for 30 minutes straight, then one of your carries gets caught out and suddenly it's like the game is just completely over just off of that single play? With how unorganized solo queue teams can be, that's a pretty common sight. Supports won't ward properly, the AD carry wants to keep pushing up for unsafe farm, the top winner refuses to group. It's all a recipe for disaster against champions whose entire playstyle revolves around playing for picks. And that's why Skarner is such an incredibly strong champion to main. Whether you're using our damage heavy build here or the classic chem tank with phase rush, he's a pick making machine that can always make game winning plays if you catch the right enemy out. The final jungler we have is Maokai. We really weren't too confident he'd be that good in the jungle even after his 1218 buffs, but sometimes even we underestimate how good or bad changes will be. His clear is quick and healthy, his ganks are incredibly easy thanks to his point and click crowd control, and his team fighting power is as good as ever. He's even seen plays on the world stage. The strength of the jungle role is a pretty controversial topic. Some people argue it's weak, others argue it's strong, and some want it to be deleted. Personally, I do think the role is pretty broken. It's the one role that can influence just how laners play out, which was fine back when junglers were more like secondary supports on a team. But now, most of the meta junglers are also ridiculously strong carries themselves. I think there should be a stronger divide between early game impact and scaling carries, like in League's earlier days. And that brings us to today's question of the day. How do you feel about the state of the jungle? That's our loaded question, but let us know your thoughts on how you think it is and what you think could maybe be changed down in the comment section below. Now for our mid laners, the first pick we have is Set. With his recent buffs, he's become what Garen used to be. 
a juggernaut that's supposed to be a scrappy top laner that has become a borderline unbeatable mid laner. It may not have seemed like that much, but the extra sticking power they gave by adding 20% more of a slow to his E made a massive difference. It's really easy for people to underestimate just how strong he is, and getting too close even once can be enough for him to force a deadly all-in. A pick that's not so new to the mid lane meta is Swain. He's been dominant here ever since his mid-scope update. Riot acknowledged that he was super broken and passed out a couple of nerfs after those changes, but in my opinion, they weren't enough. He's still ridiculously strong, easily being one of the best two item spikers in the game right now. I think his scaling is fine. What they should really go after is how safe his early game is. The final mid laner we have is Rumble. If you prefer to be ultra aggressive, looking to constantly bully your lane and go for roams to help your jungler and gank other lanes, this one is the pick for you. And that's not an exaggeration. If you watch any high elo Rumble one trick, you'll see that they're basically never in lane. Rumble's trading is pretty nasty, so most opponents just back off. When they do, you just shove the lane and leave. Early on, this is mostly just a scare tactic. But post 6, your ult can give you really strong ganks, especially against immobile bot laners. Moving things down to the bottom lane, our first pick is Seraphine. Yep, she's probably gonna make this list for the rest of forever. Sorry if that bothers you, but clearly it doesn't riot. This series is about champions to main for climbing ranked, not the most for fun picks in the game. Seraphine's ability to neutralize any lane and even bully some, combined with her absolutely insane scaling, just make her a pick we can't pass up on. And just like Seraphine, Heimerdinger is another non-traditional bot lane carry that you're just gonna have to learn to love. There are a lot of champions that show up in this series that have high win rates and low play rates, but with Heimerdinger, he's criminally underplayed. His win rate varies a bit by rank, and on some patches, he can spike as high as 56%, but on average, I'd say he's around the 54% mark. It's crazy that more people would rather grief games trying to prove they can play Zeri or Aphelios than just swallow their pride and abuse the Donger. The final bot lane carry for today is Neela. Learning Neela takes a bit of getting used to, since she is a melee carry in a lane full of ranged champions, but once you do learn her, it's not that bad at all. Her laning face is actually pretty strong since she has unmatched pushing power compared to other AD carries. And even if you do end up a bit behind early on, her scaling is insane thanks to the ridiculous amount of free stats you just get from her kit. Now for our supports, the first pick we have is Sona. I have absolutely no idea why she's getting a random buff this patch. She's not nearly as overpowered as she was a few months ago, but Sona's doing fine. I don't know why Riot struggles so badly with this philosophy. If a champion is a hyperscaling late game monster, they should not have a strong early game. They shouldn't even have a mediocre early game. They should be super bullyable so that people can actually shut them down and feel good about it. Instead, they keep pushing changes like this and making champions that fall into this category feel like they have basically no real counters, and that's why you should be abusing her for free LP. Our second support is Tarek. Ever since the durability patch, Tarek has been a gem solid choice for support mains. He's a surprisingly flexible pick, able to synergize with both divers and backline carries since his bastion allows him to cast spells off his allies no matter which side of a fight they're on. He does have a bit of a learning curve, but once you master him, he's a really solid pick that does well pretty much no matter what the meta is. Finishing off our list, we have Talia. Generally speaking, mage supports are played to shove in and poke out foes. Talia can definitely do that, but she also doubles as a deadly kill lane support. Her combo does a ton of damage while also CCing whoever you catch in it, making her pair super well with aggressive AD carries like Tristana or Draven. Aside from her laning prowess, she's also really good for roaming thanks to her passive. We even suggest running water walking to really abuse that aspect of her. And that is it for our top 3 champions to main on 1219. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know your thoughts on the state of the jungle role down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss the league further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the rift and may the LP god smile down upon you.